to see things at this angle. <laughs> OK. Um, so k is equal to 0. That's minus mu minus mu. So this is a positive. Uh, no, it's negative or positive. It's minus mu plus t. OK. But mu is minus mu plus t um, is greater than 0. So s0 is 1. OK. So s0 is 1 when k is. And then um, when k is pi, then I have t minus mu. So t minus mu, but mu is smaller than minus t. Um, t is a positive number. So this will give me also minus 1, right? Uh, plus 1, no. t minus mu. I can not do algebra anymore. Uh, Ek pi equals to 0, sorry. This should be straightforward. Does anyone see it? <laughs>
notion of how one can realize Nirvana modes. So how do I actually do that? I can redefine. I'm going to define new operators. These are fermion operators and Marana nodes. So this is how I'm going to define. So how do I construct such an operator from real fermion operators? Actually, it can be done. Um, okay, so these are fermions. And so what I can do is that they will satisfy anti-commutation relations. explain in a second, um, actually alpha, I can define alpha is equal to A and B, two different sides. Now I'm going to do the following. So I'm reconstructing my um, fermion operators. So this is my fermion operator. I just define it this way. I can do it that way, right? These are just some operators, but as long as I can effectively describe my fermion operators in terms of these two new operators, um, everything will be fine. Okay, so, so this is what I'm trying to do. Now let me go back to, to real space. Yeah, I'm a little hesitant because I see things I'm going to erase and I'm going to have to write them. Keep those for now. do that. I'm going to rewrite my Hamiltonian. You remember, originally we have a real space Hamiltonian. Now the real space Hamiltonian is rewritten again in, with this new operator. Now I don't have to worry about creation or annihilation because these gamma operators its creation and annihilation operators are identical. Okay, so I can simply write things like this. Now I will draw the picture again. my new Hamiltonian. What's my A and B? I have done one thing. Here at every side I have one particle but I split it into two particles. I just artificially make it into two particles. You may say wait a second how can you do that? Well okay it's just treat it like math. But we will see all that things later. So I split each side into two particles. And so now let's look at our situation. Um, so generally, you write this Hamiltonian, again, generally is complicated. But, but there are two special cases. I have just shown you earlier that we can have a topological state. And now we know we have a topological state, so we try to play around, try to insert more runoff modes and see what we can find. So we have two special cases. The first case is that I can have mu equals mu smaller than zero, and P is equal to delta is equal to zero. This is a special state. You remember earlier on, I have two possibilities. When I have mu um, smaller than T, this is topological. If I have mu smaller than minus T, this is trivial. So these are 
general descriptions. So now let's look at this special case. This special case, I have t and delta equals to zero, mu is smaller than zero, so it satisfies this condition, right? It's going to be a trivial state. Do I see that? Yes, because when you put t equals to zero, you just t and delta goes to zero, you cancel this thing all together. You're only left with this term. So you have, you have a totally trivial term, and so you will see that at every side, you have b and a together. So you have a, j, and gamma, b, j are um, they, at the same size. So my physical picture looks like this. I break my each side into two particles, gamma a1, gamma b1. So this is the initial one. And then next picture, I have gamma a2, gamma b2. So this is the original site, i equals to 1. This is the original site, i equals to 2. So I'm not breaking anything. I take my original part, I'm just treating it just like the same thing. So this is a totally trivial situation. So this is the ground state of CJ fermions. Um, this is a unique ground state. So this is totally trivial, as you can see. I have done nothing. I break the two particles apart, I mean, I break each particle apart, and I put them back together. So it's entirely trivial. So she goes, right? But that's a special case. So this is a unique ground state, uh, which corresponds to the vacuum of CJ fermions. So this is consistent with what I have predicted before. <coughs> whether something is trivial or non-trivial, I know it should be belong to the trivial situation. Um, okay, so let's look at another possibility. I wish I don't have to erase anything here. <laughs> um, all right, I'll start erasing the topics. If you, okay, in principle, I can use slides to show you these things. But I know if I do slides, you will never have a chance to understand things. So I'm writing it on the board so that it has a pace that you have time to look at it and, and try to absorb it, okay? So it's for your sake. Um, all right, um, so I am going to erase these. Erasers. So let's look at the non-trivial state. So the punchline I'm going to tell you is that I'm going to show you we have no runoff modes for this toy model. And then everything else later on will be constructed based on these concepts. They're just variations of such concepts. So I'm spending time on this. Okay, so let's look at the other possibility. The other special case, I make mu equals to zero and t equal to delta, and it's not zero. And you remember I already defined t and delta as positive. So this will be consistent with this condition, right? And this, I already predicted, this is going to be topological. So let's look at our real space. When I make u equals to zero, and I make delta and t to be the same, and I have a very simple situation, Cancel this out, I cancel the first term, I only have the second term. And so my Hamiltonian now is very simple. So this is my Hamiltonian. Look at this. You're combining J side B <coughs> particle with J plus one side, A particle. What does that mean? Instead of this trivial situation, I will re erase this. <coughs> I'm going to 
just start combining things like this. So here I have gamma A3, gamma B3, and then gamma A K minus 1, gamma B K minus 1, gamma A K. So I'm left with two lonely guys. This guy is not paired, and this guy is not paired. And lo and behold, look at this gamma. What's this? This is a Morona operator. This is a Morona fermion operator. So I got the two ends. In this topological case, I have two ends that are Morona modes. And so when you have a Logical superconductor in P wave. This is a simple proof showing you that um, under this very special situation, you actually have two Morana modes on the two ends. So if you have a very long chain, this is a dramatic situation. You have very, very long chain on the two ends. These are two Morana modes. They cannot be annihilated. They're sitting there very robust. And then you can start thinking, if you have multiple chains, you can start rotating them, play around. Suppose you can make these spinless P wave superconductors, you start rotating them around. You can start doing non abelian statistics. So, so that's an interesting concept. But then, of course, the question we don't have spinless P wave one dimensional superconductors, how do we do that? And I will show you, yes, we can actually construct that. So we have two Morana modes. Um, and so the point is that we have two unpaired uh, zero energy. See, they're real zero energy space, zero energy um, Morona numbers. And which I will call it gamma one, defined as gamma. Gamma 2 is defined as gamma. If I have m particles, b, n. So I just draw a line, and then I have two Morana modes sitting on the two ends. Okay, that's pretty cool, I thought. Uh, it's an interesting idea. Um, okay, but then, so these are actually non local. They are not, they're non local. Uh, fermions, um, and uh, they're at zero energy. So if I construct a new operator, I can yet construct another operator. So if I have one chain looking like that, and I have my, I construct another operator, then this, it turns out that um, you can create, you can operate on the ground state, which will be zero. And, uh, now you can operate this on the ground state, which gives you zero. I actually, yeah, I define the ground state. Um, and it turns out this um, is also a ground state. Uh, th there are some minor things I. It will take me quite a few more lines to write it down. But um, the key point is to let you know that generally I can write it like this. Okay, you, you may say, all right, that's all fine. But this is a very, very special case. I have mu equals to zero and this other condition. So what about if I relax these conditions? How would happen? Well, in general, if you relax these conditions, all you have to pay attention to is that you choose this as long as you're in the topological phase, generally, you can, you can still have Morona space. Um, but what happens is that things are not quite, um, they will not be quite exactly the same. So for mu not equals to zero, and P not equals to 
the delta. But as long as S0 is prime, is minus 1. So we are in a topological phase. Um, then you have mixtures. You will have mixtures of modes. So then gamma 1 and gamma 2 are not simply this situation that we have said are not simply gamma A1 and gamma AN. They are not so simple. Um, but so, so you will actually have to mix some of these operators and turn them into effective um, runoff modes. But um, the thing is, you can still argue that you have Marana modes because uh, the wave functions will decay. Um, the wave functions of these other constructions of modes on the two ends will decay uh, exponentially. So, so these are not two separate modes. Um, they will have some overlaps with other particles in the middle. However, overall, these are still very far apart. For as long as your chain is sufficiently long, and the wave functions of gamma 1 and gamma 2 will decay exponentially into the bulk. Um, and in that case, uh, into the bulk of the chain, and so um, so, so they will have a little overlap. you want, um, so you have a more general situation, even in the topological phase, that you have these two almost isolated modes, they actually have some overlap, they talk to each other, but very, very, very little. So effectively, you can still treat them as almost like two isolated Marana modes. So we are going to ignore, uh, we will always assume we have a sufficiently long chain, and this chain is much longer than the superconducting coherence lens. And so, so the overlap is very weak, and then you can treat each line as having two more run modes. Okay, so that's the first scenario. So this is Kitagat's model. Now I'm going to talk about the second approach. Um, so Kitagat's model is in one dimension. So you say, wait a second, so one dimension is tough. Um, usually they're not necessarily ideal, and they have strong fluctuations. About in two dimension, and also you may be curious when would that have topological insulating phase on me? Uh, but you already know something about uh, logical phases already. Okay, so if I have two D spinless system, and I'm going to consider P plus I P superconductor. So P plus I P this means typically what that means is P X plus I P one. And this other uh, possibility is Px minus Ip1. So this is like one is one is a these are chiral states. One is on clockwise, the other can be counterclockwise. Um, so we will consider one of the situations, and then the rest will be the same. Okay. So I'm going to look at in a spinless uh, superconductor um, in two dimensions. And I will also show show you that I, I 
actually we can have topological phases and then the topologically non-trivial phases, and then we can also have more run on modes. So how do we realize it? So the first thing to have my run on modes, I must have a topological phase. And then when I have a topological phase, I will figure out how to isolate my monomials. Oh, let me call your attention to one concept, which will pop back in again. So I have this line. This is a topological superconductor. And its two ends are my monomials. So you see, this is a chain, which is a topological material. And then what's the rest? This is at the, at the boundary with vacuum. So vacuum is a boundary of trivial insulator. So I have a topological phase, then I have a trivial phase. When they meet, this is when I have Morana modes. I'm going to show you the same thing in a two-dimensional construction. Again, you want to have the interface between a topological material and a trivial material. And at that interface, you can actually form uh, Morana modes. And so that's what we will do. Okay, so let me write down the Hamiltonian. I spend a lot of time going through details of Kitayev's model because that's the simplest thing. And the rest will be, I will have to go a little faster in emphasizing on the concept. I may not have time to derive everything rigorously for you, but I, have, I think I have given you references so you can look up references um, if you want to have derivations in details. You have, if I have three to four hours, I'll derive everything for you. You don't have time. We emphasize on the concept. Okay, so so then I have p plus p plus i two, and so in derivatives I can write it in operator form, right? In quantum mechanics. Um, so I have a define an operator. This is spinless fermion. Treating something as spinless. And as you can see, when I have something that's spinless, then I must deal with P wave again because I need to satisfy all the exclusion principle. Okay, so now I have this Hamiltonian, this is two dimensional, this is the chemical potential, and so I have, oh, this is formation conjugate in case I forgot to define. Um, okay, and so, so this is the pairing part. So I have annihilation, annihilation, I can create two holes binding together, and then I have formation conjugate, so I have positive of, of, of creation and creation, that means I create two electrons binding into copper pairs. So this is my Hamiltonian, this is the pairing part, superconducting part. So let's say, again, we have periodic boundary condition. boundary condition in X1, you know what I'm up to. K is a good quantum number, so I can start writing things like that earlier. So I can define my, um, my two by, a uh, one by two operator as like, uh, and I'm doing exactly the same thing like what I have done before. So I will have, um, is equal to a uh, slightly different. Uh, I have another kinetic energy term, which I didn't have in the one dimensional chain before. Um, so I put it back in, and then I have this delta k. Everything else looks just like what I have written up there. That's why I didn't want to erase that part. And then my Hamiltonian now looks like. The only difference is that I'm doing a two-dimensional integration now in case space. 